Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Golf Front Podcast. My name is Brett Bevilacqua. I'm a realtor with Carolina Property Sales in Southern Pines, North Carolina. And if you don't know, each Monday I release a new podcast profiling a local golf course and the golf front homes that surround the course. This week, we go to Deercroft Golf Club in Wagram, North Carolina. It took me three tries over the course of five years to finally play 18 at Deercroft. The first two times I was rained out on the 11th and 12th holes. I figured playing Deercroft just wasn't in the cards for me, so I stayed away. Well, a few weeks back, my group decided to play Deercroft, and the third time was certainly the charm. Deercroft is short, real short, and normally that works great for my game, but it balances out thanks to a bunch of tight fairways, and many of the greens are small. Deercroft has a practice range and a practice green and a layout that brings you back to the clubhouse after nine, where there is a restaurant and bar. Deercroft is located in Wagram, North Carolina, about 20 miles and 35 minutes from downtown Pinehurst. The course opened in 1983 and was designed by Gardner Gidley. It is a par 72 that plays about 6,600 from the back and 6,200 from the blues, which are actually what most would consider the white tees. From the back, the course is rated 72.6 with a slope of 135. From the blues, it's rated 70.6 with a slope of 127. Deercroft Golf Club starts out with a medium length dog leg right par four. You'll need a straight and healthy drive off the tee, and if you catch the corner, you may get a little extra run as the fairway sweeps downhill on the bend. The small green slopes right to left and is guarded by bunkers front and back left. The second is a short but tight dog leg left par five. If you can, keep it center or right of the fairway, but be sure to avoid the bunker on the right. Even with a decent drive, you should be able to reach the very small and fast green that is sloped back to front in two. There are three bunkers in front of the green, two left and one right. The third is a short downhill par three with a large green that is sloped back to front. There are bunkers both front and behind the green. The fourth is a medium length par four. The last 50 yards runs downhill to another small green that is sloped back to front. The fifth is a short par four that plays a little longer on approach thanks to an elevated green. You'll probably need to add another club. The green again is small, though this time mostly level. The sixth is a medium length par three. Off the tee, you will need an extra club due to the elevated green, which is sloped slightly back to front. There is a tough bunker to the left and a smaller bunker back left. Seven is probably my favorite hole on the course, certainly on the front nine. This long par five bends to the left. Big hitters can go over the tree on the left off the tee as there's ample landing room there and just to the left. If you don't have that shot off the tee, you'll need to play it down the fairway and get there in regulation. No matter, all players will probably need to add a club on their approach. Trust me, the hill here is deceptive. The green is sloped back to front and an absolute nightmare coming back if you go over the green. Eight is another straight par four, though slightly downhill, plays a bit longer than the scorecard. There is waste area and bunkers down the right side, and this green is so tough to stick. My entire foursome rolled over or off the side of this green. There is a lone pine to the left of the green that could be tricky, and getting up and down from the green side bunker is an absolute nightmare. Nine is a medium length par four that feels so much longer due to the steady incline up a fairway that is sloped right to left. Off the tee, there is a creek that could come into play if you miss your drive, and two small but deep bunkers to the left of this back to front sloping green. You will need an extra club on your approach. The 10th tee box is just to the left of the clubhouse and this par four, though short, has a punishing green that is too easy to putt off of if you are above the pin. I flew the green by a few feet, tapped a wedge which bounced twice on the back apron only to roll across the green and 20 yards back into the fairway. Be mindful that this fairway is well sloped left to right and you will get a good roll, maybe right off the fairway if you are left off the tee. 11 is a short dog leg left par five, but thanks to the hill, we'll take two monster shots to get there in two. The green is large, mostly level, and like a lot of the back nine, is much easier than the offerings from the front nine. 12 is a short par three with a bunker left and back right. The green is so aggressively sloped back to front that it is almost unfair. If you are above the pin, a par is almost out of the question. 13 is a medium length par four that bends just a bit to the right. There is waste area left before a large green that is guarded by three very large bunkers. 
14 is a long par 4 that is made a little easier with a tee shot that favors the center or right side of the fairway. There is a fairway bunker on the right that most players should be able to carry. The large, mostly level green is protected by a bunker right and back left. 15 is a long and tough dogleg left that is too easy to find the waste area or worse, the woods on the right if you fail to draw your tee shot. The green is once again easy or at least easier than the first 10 greens. 16 is a lengthy par free that hosts a thin green that is protected by three medium sized bunkers. 17 is a short par 5 that bends a little to the left. The ideal tee shot should favor the right side of the fairway. The green is sloped right to the left side bunker, which can be a problem. 18 is a dogleg left with a lot of landing room, but you don't want anything to do with the extreme left side of the fairway, as there are a few trees that could obscure your approach shot. There is a creek just shy of the back to front sloped elevated green. It is a darn good finishing hole. Deercroft Golf Club is a challenge, especially players like myself who tend to spray shots off target. All in all, it is a bunch of fun and with greens fees in the $40 to $60 range, make it a course well worth your time and dollar. For more information, go to deercroft.com or give them a call at 910-369-3107. Deercroft area is a bit off the beaten path and homes, even really nice golf front homes can be had at some of the best prices in the Sandhill. There are also condos with golf views, but when they come to market, they are snatched up quickly. If you want to know more about Deercroft or anywhere else in the Sandhills, give me a call at 845-365-3665 or send an email to brett at hmpfilms.com. Once again, I'm Brett Bevilacqua with Carolina Property Sales. I hope you join me next week when we head north to the Creek Course at Carolina Trace.